But I know that, uh, you know, you're certainly a character that people have been so excited about, like both of you, Denai and David. And by the way, uh, everyone should, oh good, you're already lined up. I don't know, tell people here. Uh, before we get to audience questions, I do have one more question for, for Andrew, which is, um, you know, where do you think, where do you think Rick is, is at right now? I mean, like, Rick is a guy that in season one, you know, good guy, lawful good, you might say, uh, and now his alignment has changed, so the lines of good and bad for him seem constantly blurred. So what is it that you think keeps Rick centered? Well, I think, uh, I certainly think this season you meet him at a place where he's, uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to think this one through. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Should I do that a bit more? Yeah. Um, I think he is, um, I was reading a book, has anybody read or seen The Road by Cormac McCarthy? Yeah. Great. Right? And I saved reading that until now, and I think uh, Rick is very much uh, at that point. And it's interesting because the time scale in that book and this uh, season I think is very similar, and he's been pushing people away all the way through Cormac McCarthy's book. He's going, go away, go away, go away, to protect his son. And in so doing, he loses his humanity. And I think that he's, Rick has isolated himself from the group and in his marriage, and he, that's the way that he is protecting everybody. And I think that it's a really interesting place to start this season, because I think I'm currently going batshit crazy as well. Just the last few weeks, I've been going really bananas. Um, and, which is great, and, um, but I do think that the season is very much about him realizing that he does need other people to survive. So, um, I, do you think that answers your question? Yeah, that, perfectly, because we had talked about on Talking Dead, you guys are calling it the rictatorship now, where he was like, all right, shut up and sit down, now we're doing things my way or leave. Uh, so I think that's a great place to start from, from season season three. Let's take uh, some audience questions, because I'm sure there are many, and I want to make sure we get to a few. Oh, a lady just appeared. Uh, what is your name, and what is your question? My name is Claudia. I'm from Brazil. I'm here on behalf of the Walking Dead Brazil website, and Rafael, my friend. Uh, you are a hit in Brazil. We have more than 20,000 followers on Twitter. The show is massive there. Anyways, my question is for Andrew. If you have a chance to be uh, to play any other role on the show, which one would that be? That's a, a very interesting question. Well, I, I sort of I, I'm having a bromance at the moment with Norman Reedus. Make <laughs> <laughs> out, make out, make out. <laughs> but um, I, I, uh, Carl is a great character, I, and I think that it's. Uh, I just want to say this about, he is such a gifted actor, and the stuff that he is doing this season is going to blow your mind. He is so, so talented. Chandler Riggs, yeah. And, and Chandler Riggs, and we are so lucky to have this kid. He has got, he makes choices and that are way beyond his years, and he's been doing some magnificent work. So, I think his journey this season is something that I kind of, I'm watching very, very carefully, and it's a thrill. So yeah, maybe Carl. I think there's an interesting parallel between the actor Chandler Riggs and the character of Carl in that it, you sort of really get the sense in both instances that, you know, kids are so resilient and they will adapt to whatever situation they're drawn into because it's just how we survive. Yeah. And it seems like he's doing that on, as an actor and, and as the role of Carl. I totally agree. And he's, ha he's having this extraordinary... Oh my god, that's weird. You. Uh, that's <laughs> Whoa! Hey. Give me my hat back. Give me my hat. I miss my hat, by the way. <laughs> I borrowed it for like a minute, and then I just took a picture and then I put it down. I'm sorry if I sweated in it. What is your name? Uh, Rick Grimes? I'm, I'm Carl, actually. Uh, <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I, no, seriously. Yeah. Are you messing with us? No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> All right, okay. You can look me up on Facebook. I probably won't do that. <laughs> uh, I'm a huge fan of the show. My question is for Mr. Lincoln and Miss Cohen. I'm wondering how you develop such uh, convincing American Southern accents, um, you know, since you're both Brits. Jessica Drake. Mm -hmm. She's, uh, Andy and I both work with the same, actually David now as well, we work with a really wonderful dialect coach and we have Skype sessions every Sunday, it's kind of like church. Um, <laughs> and 
I think it's, it's been about a few key exercises and then staying in it. Andy sets an amazing example. I mean, he, he did his exit from the second he arrives until he leaves. And I think that that's something I've learned is a really good way to go. And um, I don't know, the one thing you have to be careful of, when I first started, there are a lot of Teamsters uh, involved and the people in our crew that are from the South and their accents are extremely strong. So when you actually first start practicing it, there's a danger of getting a real draw, which is a complete exaggeration and not true to it at all. <laughs> Are you just gonna sit in the crack barrel for four hours? <laughs> You'll pick it up real quick. <laughs> so well to the, to the accent. Yeah, I think we're lucky that we film down in the south and the characters, we, you know, the, the dialect is of that area. And it's just the rhythms. If you, if you live and work around people that are in the same sort of ballpark uh, dialect, it really, really helps. And in fact, you know, I, I, I'm like a sponge. I just sort of absorb sort of inflection. And, um, and it's also, I just love living and working in America. And it's been, you know, I, I start my coffee shop people. I just want to big them up because my character is built on caffeine and tension. And um, I, that's Aurora Coffee Shop in Atlanta. Um, they wanted me to wear a T-shirt, but then, why am I talking about this? Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, they um, they don't hear this silly voice that I put on for Comic Con. They only hear the real dialect. So. Oh, that's cool. So you just you, you practice with it all day when you're. Yeah, I just kind of stay in dialect. Didn't they have to dial you back? They did. Yeah, they said that. that I think it was Gail who actually came up to me and said, "Andy, dial it in. We're not. We're gonna. Have to, we don't want to have to subtitle you." Because <laughs> <laughs> I think me and John in that opening car sequence, you know, when we're talking in the car, we we went a little rural. A little bit rural. <laughs> what, what what did that sound like? What, watch the first episode, and you'll see. <laughs> uh, what is your What is your name, sir? What's your question? My name's Ryan, and one of the hats the producers is the writers. There's a lot that you guys get away with on TV, but how did you get away with Andrea grabbing Shane? That was like full frontal, she just went for it, and it was <laughs> intense. I was like, what's going on? First of all, it's, it sounds like you were super way into it. <laughs> how did you get that sweet Andrea like Shane X, man? She just got in there and worked it. You should have seen what we did, it got cut. <laughs> that was that guy's only question. <laughs> Woo. Hello. Hi. What's your name? My name's Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. Hi, and I'm a lady who loves sweaty rednecks. Call <laughs> me. <laughs> you know, wait, you know Norman's not really a sweaty redneck, though. You know, no, 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 I know, okay, I know. Okay, okay, okay. So that makes sense. You just need no matter what. Yeah, matter. I'll take it. Okay, uh, sure, done. I used to propose a dating show. I know how this shit works. Oh, okay. Works for me. <laughs> My question is for Robert. Are we ever gonna know uh, the history? of Daryl Dixon. I really appreciate that, so please. Oh, oh, love you. <laughs> I will say, uh, so here, here's the thing, the, the show doesn't necessarily like to look back, we don't like to go too far into flashback mode, but I will say there is a uh, new game coming from Activision that features Daryl Dixon as a uh, main character, and it's all about him and Merle in the early days of the apocalypse, uh, killing zombies. You will get to get inside the head of the guy you love, <laughs> and control him. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Jessica, and um, I love Steven. Hi. He's blushing. He just turned red. He turned red. <laughs> 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 Uh, 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 
<laughs> anyway, it is very respectable to meet you, young lady. Uh, what is your question? My question is, um, if you're stuck in a real-life apocalypse, um, how do you think your chances of our surviving? Me personally, or all of us? Um, I don't really care. <laughs> Question ever. Uh, can we get her on our show? Uh, <laughs> you know, with the chance of me surviving, um, I'm. Uh, I can be resourceful, but also I'm sometimes um, uh, a little lazy. So, uh, you know, it depends how it all works out. I think I answered this before, but um, it, if, if the situation calls that there are a lot of attractive women around and just me, I'll stay. <laughs> in six years, in, yeah, in a while, in a, in a little while. Uh, uh, I was gonna say scouting, but that's a terrible thing. Yeah. That's a terrible thing. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, um, and if not, if there's just a bunch of bros, uh, we'll just, just, you know, uh, maybe I'll just lay down and let one bite me, so. <laughs> you're playing, you're like, man, what a sausage party here, she <laughs> 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 super <happy> <laughs> What a weirdo apocalypse plan. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, if you don't stick around, we're like, none of us dudes. apocalypse. There's only dudes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Porsche Guard Girl, dude. Uh, what is your name, sir?